What's up guys, Jerome here, and today we're going to be covering what's new in Phase 3 of Wrath of the Lich King. From the new dungeons, to the new raids, quests, and gold making opportunities, I'm going to cover absolutely everything. So first up, we're going to be getting a new dungeon called Trial of the Champion. This is the ultimate catch-up dungeon, you'll be able to get new 200 item level gear from Normal Mode and 219 from Heroic. Now if you're an active raider already, you may not look at this gear and be that excited, but even as a full-time Alduar raider, I'm still excited about the trinkets. For example, the Black Heart looks like a really fun item for my priest in PvP. Plus, every single boss will be dropping champion seals, and champion seals are going to be a whole lot more relevant in phase 3. We'll talk about those champion seals in a second, but first you need to know that there's new quests for the Argent Tournament. The new quests will fill out the areas north of the Argent Tournament, and for story purposes there'll be a new Black Knight's questline edition. If you haven't worked through that questline already, I recommend getting on it. And if all of this feels like just a giant waste of time to you, it shouldn't. There are a bunch of really relevant new rewards being added in phase 3. There's the new Argent Warhorse mount, which is sure to turn heads. And I love to talk about the new Argent Pony Bridle. If you attach that to your Squire, you'll be able to access the bank every 4 hours. And I'm definitely going to buy an Argent Tabard so I can teleport back to TOC for my GDKPs. And while we're talking about new items, you can't forget about Jeeves. If you haven't farmed your Jeeves recipe yet, you can easily get it from the Library Guardians and Storm Peaks. The Jeeves requires several of every different repair bond, as well as some King's Amber. King's Amber is one of the many new epic gems added in Phase 3. There are going to be so many different ways to get epic gems. The first way is PvP. For just 10,000 honor, you can buy an epic gem. Once you're honor capped on every character, you can supplement your honor with Wintergrass Marks for 2,000 extra honor each. The second way to get epic gems will be from 20 Emblems of Heroism. I'm stocking up by doing the Daily Heroic Dungeon every single day. You can also get epic gems from the Alchemy Transmute, but there will be a 20 hour cooldown. But my favorite way to get epic gems will be from Titanium Prospecting. If you've watched my recent videos, you've probably noticed that I've spent thousands of gold on Titanium Ore. That's because the second that Phase 3 drops, I'll be prospecting my Titanium Ore into gems. And I'm not just going to sell these gems either. I'm also going to be using the new Epic Gem Patterns to make even more gold. The new Epic Gem Patterns will be available from Timothy Jones for 4 Dalaran Jewel Crafting Tokens each. Although you could easily stock up hundreds of tokens to get every single recipe, I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, I plan to just get the most relevant recipes like the Rune Cardinal Ruby or the Mystic King's Amber for PvP. If you're excited to make profit from gems in Phase 3, hit the subscription button, click the like button, and click that notification bell. Moving into raiding, we've got the new Trial of the Crusader raid. This is going to be the most controversial raid tier in Wrath of the Lich King. A lot of people are going to complain about the short length of the raid. There's also no trash whatsoever, and a lot of people really like pumping trash, especially Boomkins. And while this raid isn't that long, and it doesn't have all those cool big name bosses, it does have a lot of really cool and technically impressive ideas. First things first, there's four different modes in Trial of the Crusader. There's the 10 man, the 25 man, and the heroic 10 and 25 as well. Think of the 10 and 25 normals as the ultimate catch up raids. Once at least one player has cleared the normal mode, you'll be able to do the heroic mode. The main new mechanic is the tribute chest system. The less wipes you have in the raid, the more gear you get. And if you have 50 wipes, all the bosses the just up idea? and disappear. If you can somehow complete the dungeon with all your 50 attempts remaining, you'll get a bonus cloak as a reward. And similar to how it was back in Nax, if you do the entire run deathless, you'll get a bonus mount for free. But the raid also simplifies some of the loot systems that were pretty frustrating to deal with. For example, instead of tier pieces, if you're in the 10 man, you'll get the trophy of the crusade, and if you're in the 25 man, you'll get the regalia of the grand conqueror. Though just like in the last phase, there's also new crafted gear you can make. And that new gear requires crusader orbs, and pretty much the same materials as last time. Moving on from TOC, you may be surprised to learn that TOC isn't the only raid in this tier. We'll also be getting a new Onyxia raid as well. This is going to be the ultimate nostalgia raid with all these items you remember from back in Classic. Though interestingly, the gear is pretty much exactly the same as TOC. Normal mode will be 232 and heroic mode will be 245. The main reason people want to run Onyxia is for the reigns of the Onyxian Drake. That's arguably a top 3 mount in Wrath and it's extremely desirable. And speaking of desirable, there's also the new boss in Vault of Archivon, Coralon. If you want to get some free Relentless Gladiator gear, there's no better way. And I definitely recommend getting the Season 7. If you're playing a warrior, for example, you're going to really start to pump and dominate all those noobs in the arena. But if arenas just aren't your style, you can also try the new Isle of Conquest Battleground. Though back in the day from the comments, everybody just kept talking about how short the matches were. With the games only lasting about 10 minutes each, it seems like the rewards will have to be changed for it to be worthwhile. But either way, I'm extremely excited for Phase 3, and I hope you are too. If you want to get as prepped as possible, you have to check out my Phase 3 prep guide. It'll cover exactly what you need to do to get as prepared as possible for Phase 3. 